Well, hello there. This is a Zoom recording microphone device. It's the H, I forget what it's called. Aaron's gonna put a big piece of text right here called the H whatever it is. Uh, I love this mic. It's, it's worked super well for us. John Saunders told me to get it, so I did, and I love it. Except it takes two AAA batteries and has a little slidey door uh, to hold the batteries in. And that slidey door just broke. So this tiny little piece I literally, I dropped it accidentally like this far. I, it must have been on the slidey door, the battery's forced out, and then this little guy broke in half. Um, so I'm really disappointed about that. However, I was just looking at it and I was like, you know what, we could 3D print that in not much time at all. So let's go ahead and do that. It's not a very complicated little device. And because we're 3D printing it in this orientation, the layers will be the strong way. If you print it the other way, then you'll, it'll break layer by layer. Does that make sense? So once we get going, it'll make more sense. Uh, right now, I've got the mic working because I have it plugged into a USB cord into my laptop, which seems to be working great, but it's not like a permanent solution. So let's model this thing up in Fusion and get going. Okay, so we are jumping into Fusion 360. I've got my spacer file right here, Norseman folder. Go back one, I've got a John Random Projects folder. So let's do a new file in there. And save that new file in John Random Mac. Let's call this uh, Zoom Daily. Okay, new sketch, um, top plane. And let's just start measuring this thing up. First, figure out which direction the broken piece goes in. Okay, goes like that. Let's start from the easy side. 40 thou. 40 thou thing by how long is it? 0.19. D for dimension, 0.19 long. All right, we're making this. And then there's a little thingy that comes down. 0625. 0625. And then... 80,000. All right. And then there's a little nubby. 40,000. Go L for line. Nope, let's do that again. Four, alpha line, bring it back to there. It's looking good. And then this thing had some little ridges. I wonder if the printer will be able to pick these up. Actually, you know what we'll do? We'll go select both of them, make them equal. Didn't like that. Oh, because of these restraints and stuff. Let's try that again. Make those two equal, better. Let's get a height dimension. Let's make the grippies about 5,000. And I think we should be able to pattern this. You know what we'll do? So we'll do a dimension from there to there. We'll figure out what that distance is. We'll make it 0.1. Perfect. Select those. Pattern. Boom. I, it defaults to extent. I hate extent. I love doing it as spacing because then I always know what the spacing is. Let's look at this. Okay, so it's got the grippies all the way across. So we'll go four. Five. Yeah, all the way across. Twelve. Nope. Eleven. Ten. Perfect. Look at that. And if they turned yellow, so they are good to go. Okay. Now, there to there, we'll make this one vertical. It's getting there. Okay, now we're off the broken piece already. Now I just gotta kind of hold this, figure out which way it goes. 
I could super glue this back together, but I don't think that'll be strong enough, and it's not nearly as fun or cool. Looks like 57 thou. Nice round number. Not. And 057. And it should go up. Okay, that was the ID, that was 57. Fifty thousand. Okay, so that's fifty thousand. That's that. And then a quick little line over here. That's a bit better. And that is starting to look like a part. Let's do it. So, extrude the sketch. Let's figure out how thick it is. One seven five. Done. Everything's perfect. And that is our model. Now. To export it uh, into my software, I have to do it in millimeters, which is annoying. And then I go to the bodies and I right click and I go save as STL. And into the 3D printer file, let's call it uh, Zoom Reporter Door Flappy. And then we go into Cura. That. There's my Cura. Okay. Open file. Zoom recorder door flappy. So the way that I do everything is I save everything to my Google Drive account. I have it synced to my PC here so that Fusion and Cura and everything can save directly to that Google Drive folder. Syncs to the cloud, syncs it back. We have it on all the computers. I have it on my phone. I use this all the time. Every single uh, CAD file, CAM file, not CAD file necessarily, because Fusion is cloud-based, but every code that I output for the mill goes right to my drive folder, and it's, it's amazing. So I've got a 3D printer folder that goes in here. So the, let's see, we gotta change the orientation. 90 degrees, perfect. Let's give us a little top view. I like to go to the layer height view, but it's got to calculate to do that. All right, with the current settings that I tend to use for everything, this ain't gonna work. Uh, little raft, that's fine. I like the raft. Let's go with a let's go with a tiny layer height, 0.05, and um, I want f I do not want any infill, so I want full infill. Do, do, do. What else? What else? print speed. I might want to slow down the print speed, but we'll see. Get a bit of a different view. You can see every layer height, which is nice. That'll be a lot of layers. It's still only going to take seven minutes. I just hope that's going to be strong enough. I don't like the way that that infill looks. Let's try that. Let's try this out. This should be good. Dump it onto a micro SD card and then we'll print. So for some reason, the Cura software likes to keep thinking that we're using a 2.85 millimeter diameter uh, filament, but we're using a 1.75 filament. And trying to print at the wrong setting, it just, it doesn't work. So we're like, why is this working? Um, I don't know why Cura keeps thinking that. And I fix it, and then it goes back. Next time I open it up, it goes back to 2.85.
super annoying. Anyway, I got it set to 1.75. Let's try this again. Kill me again, Mr. Bartender, please. I need a shot and I'm begging on my knees. The way to fight is one battle at the time. You may have won today, but I'll see you at the finish line. Hey guys, Erin here. Thanks for watching that video. I hope you all really, really liked it. John would be doing this conclusion, but he is taking a two-day, well-deserved break, and he'll be back very soon. He'll be back next week, and we can do lots more videos with him. We were really happy that we had the 3D printer to help us work on this project. If we didn't have the 3D printer, we'd basically be wrapping an elastic band around it, or doing some sort of hack solution to the problem, and that's just not full Grimsmo. We like to go full Grimsmo here. And the 3D printer has helped us with many other different projects that have made the workshop just work a little bit more efficiently, and we know it's those little things that make a really big difference in overall uh, production flow. So we've made things like the Shallard bins. You might have seen these little projects in the 3D printing video that we did a few months ago. And um, I hope you really liked this video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel because there's lots more content coming out like that. And I will see you guys later. <laughs>